Right, so for all of Israel's claims to be targeting Hamas, they are taking out an awful lot of civilian infrastructure, not to mention civilians in the process. And that very much includes medical aid, infrastructure and personnel. I covered the attack on a Medicine Sans Frontières convoy in a recent video, but that I've since discovered was just scratching the surface. You have to bear in mind here that Israel has access to the most cutting edge state of the art weaponry and technology on the planet. Other nations cannot sell it to them fast enough because they're always in the market and are more than capable of making actual surgical strikes rather than what they are saying are surgical. They've proven in the past to be able to take out an apartment floor whilst leaving all the rest of the building untouched, for example. So what they've been doing for weeks now is not surgical at all, but it amounts to blatantly levelling Gaza, starting from the north and working their way southwards, driving people south as they do so. Ethnically cleansing the region, we can only assume. It seems obvious. So all Israel can take the land, lock, stock and barrel. Why else would they be carrying on the way they are? This disproportionate response to what happened on October 7th. But it's the medical facilities and their staff being targeted I want to draw the attention to in this video because the sheer scale of what Israel has been doing just on that, a war crime as it specifically is, done under the nonsense excuse of fighting Hamas, despite all of Israel's lies about tunnels and weapons caches being behind MRI machines being completely debunked, a press conference by Dr. Ben Thompson of North American Medical Doctors spelled out exactly what has been happening in Gaza at Israeli hands. How is any of this, in what he says, fighting Hamas? Right, so a press conference was called the other day by North America Medical Doctors representative Dr. Ben Thompson. North America Medical Doctors are one agency of humanitarian medical aid working under the umbrella aid agency Union of Medical Relief and Care Organizations, the UOSSM. His statement was so good, so clear, so bluntly hard-hitting, I defy anyone to argue with what he says, with the statistics he came out with. The situation from the medical aid perspective in Gaza, in and of itself, is absolutely dire and being deliberately taken out. There can be no question of that, based on the fact after fact that he delivered in his speech. He said, We are reaching the point of no return, where blatant disregard for international humanitarian law scars our collective consciousness. As of this morning, 283 healthcare workers in Gaza have been killed. The last two months has been the deadliest conflict in United Nations history, with 133 of their staff members killed. There have been 212 attacks on Gaza healthcare facilities since October the 7th. This includes 24 different hospitals that have been bombed by Israel. Over 100 ambulances that have been put out of service. Israel has arrested dozens of doctors. Their whereabouts remain unknown. The head of the main hospital, Shifa Hospital in Gaza City, Mohammed Abu Salmaya, has been under Israeli arrest since November 22nd. Many other senior doctors have continued to be held by the Israeli military for almost two weeks, with no charges and no one knows their whereabouts. Rantizi Pediatric Subspecialty Hospital, bombed. Al Nazar Pediatric Hospital, Bombed. Gaza's only eye hospital. Bombed. Gaza's only mental health hospital. Bombed. Wafa Rehabilitation Hospital. Bombed. The senior facility immediately adjacent to Wafa Rehabilitation Hospital. Bombed. Al Jura Children's Hospital. Targeted with prohibited white phosphorus on October the 12th. Indonesian Hospital. The only hospital currently operating in the north. Still trying to treat patients while being bombed. Shifa Hospital, bombed. The two medical schools in Gaza, the Islamic University of Gaza, bombed, and Al-Azhar University Medical School, bombed. Medicine Sans Frontières Ambulance Convoy, bombed. Red Cross Ambulance Convoys, bombed. Of 35 hospitals in Gaza as of this morning, 26 are non-functional. Nine remain only partially functional, but they are operating at more than double their capacity with critical shortages of basic supplies and fuel. These facilities are also providing shelter to thousands of internally displaced people. Palestine Red Crescent Society yesterday announced that amp operations of their ambulances in northern Gaza has stopped due to depletion of fuel, hospital closures. It is now impossible to evacuate wounded people in the north. Instead, those patients are left to die. 
As of this morning, over 17,000 Palestinian people have been killed, including over 7,000 children. There are at least 46,000 people injured, thousands of whom are critically injured. There is insufficient hospital space to treat even a fraction of these patients. Massively overcrowded United Nations shelters have become havens to spread infectious diseases, including a hepatitis A outbreak, multiple meningitis outbreaks, lice, skin infections, and multiple diarrheal illness outbreaks. The United Nations Human Rights Office has declared on December the 5th the pattern of attacks that target civilian infrastructure raises serious concerns about Israel's compliance with international humanitarian law and raises the risk of atrocity crimes. There have been immeasurable numbers of violations of special protection to civilians, children and medical personnel and widespread violations of international humanitarian law. I'm really not sure how much more bluntly and clearly obvious it is that Israel's actions in response to the October 7th Hamas attack and the deaths that led to in Israel, evidence pointing to many, if not most of those deaths, actually being at Israeli hands under so-called Hannibal directives, has not been about targeting Hamas, but wiping out the ability for anyone to survive and live in Gaza. It is a war crime to target civilians deliberately, yet by blocking medical staff from doing their jobs and clearly targeting their facilities as well in order to help civilians, this is clearly what is happening. Nobody is safe anywhere. 283 medical workers killed, more arrested for doing what exactly? The crime of saving lives? It is a war crime to target medical staff. It is a war crime to target journalists. A much more widely publicised story of Israeli atrocity that's come out and the attacks and the numbers of journalists that have killed. More journalists having been killed in Gaza since October the 7th than in any other conflict ever, including both world wars. Israel appeared to be deliberately targeting those reporting what is happening and those trying to save lives. Sickeningly, the only entity being afforded protection seems to be Israel itself, thanks to the UN permanently having its hands tied over this matter, the US vetoing a stop to Israel carrying on doing what it is doing, and now having put into law, symbolic as it is, that anti-Zionism is now anti-Semitic, which will endanger the lives of the great many anti-Zionist Jews living in America. It is an absurd equation to make. It is not true, and it ties the hands of anyone trying to hold Israel to account for what it is actually doing. The International Criminal Court in The Hague is apparently now investigating Israel over these breaches of humanitarian law. Uh, Israel has been reported to them by Turkey, which has triggered an absurd response from Benjamin Netanyahu, who has taken to video, calling such an action anti-Semitic, because of course he has. Accusing the court of now being racist, it is what Israel do every time, but is also not true and we all need to have the courage to call out this weaponization of anti-Semitism when we see it. Because if we don't, not only does it make it harder to fight the real thing, the societal evil that it is, but it also makes it harder to deal with Israel and help those in Palestine who are right now the victims of genocide. That said, faith in the ICC seems to have issues surrounding its chief prosecutor being a bit toothless on this matter. But that's going to have to wait for another video. There is not one fully functional hospital left in the whole of Gaza. You cannot say that that isn't deliberate. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Please like, share and subscribe if you did. More content out daily. Please do have your say on this story in the comments below. Be part of the conversation. Meanwhile, here's a video recommendation where I cover the details of that Medicine Sans Frontiers medical convoy bombing. This is just one story amongst so many, so very similar. And I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.